Hello everyone, my name is Madison and welcome back to Help and Help and today I'll be writing your guys' enclosures. Now some of you might notice that I'm in a different room right now filming and that may or may not be because I got a new family member who's adjusting to the frog room right now. I guess you guys will just have to wait and see if there's a video later about it. <laughs> but back to the video right now. For any of you who do not know what the Write Your Enclosure series is, it's where people submit photos of their enclosures to our Instagram page, hop and underscore help, with what species is in it and I give advice in this video format to help them better their animals' lives. So if you'd like to participate in the next Rate Your Enclosure video, please submit a photo and what species is in it to hop and underscore help. And before the video begins, I'd like to note that I am not an expert and this is from research that I have done and personal experience. And here I have my laptop and let us get started into the first enclosure that is for a leopard gecko. Now for young leopard geckos, a 10 gallon is perfectly fine, but once you become an adult, you're gonna want a 20 gallon long. I personally do not suggest Repticarp because it can hold bacteria in it. Um, I prefer paper towels. It's a very easy way to keep it sanitary or you can use slate tiles. I use a mixture. I see that you have a light and that is great if it's UV, but you want your main heat source to be a heat pad. Leopard geckos need heat from below. A secondary heat source is only necessary if the room the enclosure is in is dropping below 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Having too much heat can cause the leopard geckos to overheat. They can't sweat. All they can do is move to a colder side of the enclosure and with two heat sources, it tends to mess up the heat gradient. But I absolutely love how many vines you included. Leopard geckos cannot climb, but they absolutely love going underneath those vines or exploring around them or on top of them where they can reach. I, it's something that I recommend for everyone to have in their enclosures because it's very natural and my leopard geckos always sleep under theirs. For your humid hive, it's nice, but you're going to want to have something that has a lid on it for you to get the full effect of the humid hive. You could still use that bowl, just, you know, incorporate something that has a lid on it, whether you put it in like a Tupperware, there's a few other creative ways that you could make that into having a lid on it. And because you're in a 10 gallon, I understand that you don't have three uh, solid hides, well, the human hide, of course. You don't have a second uh, solid hide, but once you upgrade to a 20 gallon long when they are an adult, you're gonna have one more hide in there, like your log hide, like a rock hide or something like that. But this is a really amazing enclosure for a young leopard gecko, so good job. And next we have another leopard gecko, so the same applies for the repti carpet, I suggest paper towels. I'd also like to point out that the previous tank and this tank have a temperature and humidity gauge that is absolutely amazing. It is always great to be able to double check that everything on all the levels are correct, so I applaud both of you for that. You have a nice humid hide, just make sure you're misting it, I personally only put the humid hide in when my gecko is going to shed. Uh, so I have three solid hides plus the humid hide when they're getting ready to shed. And that's when they turn like a whitish gray color. So just making sure you keep that nice and misted and then changing out those paper towels every once in a while so that they don't grow any mildew. You have a water bowl, which is awesome. And then you have all together three hides, which is really, really great. Um, it does appear that your gecko is a little underweight, so make sure you're feeding a diet of crickets and dubia roaches. Um, calcium dusting every other feeding. I feed every other day, so on Monday I'll feed without calcium, on Wednesday I will feed with calcium, essentially. And then you can incorporate things like hornworms, waxworms, and moths. These are high in fat, so you want to separate them out. Um, I usually only feed one of these a month as a treat but as you're trying to supplement your gecko to gain some more weight, you can give one once a week. Or for wax worms, you can give a few a week. But they can be highly addicting, so I'm warning you that, that they think they're like potato chips and they might stop eating crickets and dubious, which is bad. So you gotta be very careful with wax worms, but hornworms are the big green worms and you can give one of those once a week. Um, and another tip uh, for hornworms, don't buy a ton of them because they grow extremely fast and you won't be able to use all of them and they're expensive. So if you have a local place where you can buy one, just buy one once a week. So I would highly suggest that. But this is a really good base 
to your to your uh, leopard gecko enclosure. I would add some of those vines that you saw in the previous enclosure just to add some more foliage for your gecko to hide in. And then once your gecko is full grown, I would suggest a 20 gallon lawn. But this is really great. It's awesome base. I love the driftwood piece. Really good job. And next is another leopard gecko. And I absolutely love this enclosure. One, the pumpkin is adorable, and the owner sent me a few photos of the enclosure, but I really like this upper angle because it shows every piece of this very intricate tank. You have five hides, which is really, really amazing. I'm not sure if you have two humid hides or if that's just another jar hide, but either way, that's great. I love that you added these succulents in. You also have the vines, fresh water, it's on paper towels, it's a 20 gallon long. It appears that you have a heat pad, so this is perfect. This is the perfect leopard gecko tank. I honestly have no like critiques at all. This is perfect. The only thing that I would suggest, um, but you do have moss, which is perfect is I like incorporating um, something where your gecko can like rest a little bit more on something comfy. Uh, it helps with joints, so hammocks and then like crocheted hides and things like that. They're just, you know, like memory foam for geckos. So as your gecko gets older, that's something I'd suggest, but you do have the moss, which is basically the natural equivalent to either ones of those. So amazing job on your enclosure. And next is another leopard gecko from the same owner. So again, this is just amazing. The only suggestion I would have is keeping that moss in the hide. Um, I don't know if you feed uh, with the releasing the crickets in the tank, hand feed in the tank or take them out, but moss can cause an impaction. That's why it's good to keep it just in the humid hide. Um, but besides that, again, this is a really amazing enclosure. Only suggestion is adding something that um, can give a little give to their joints. But again, you have moss, so that can be really good as well. And then just keeping that moss in the jar, but amazing job. And next up, we have a bearded dragon. And I let the owner know already that having those heat bulbs so close to your bearded dragon concerns me in a few ways, that they're just extremely close and your bearded dragon could get burnt. Um, it also could be too hot, and thirdly, they can be blinding. You can just see in this photo how incredibly bright that light is. So I would highly, highly suggest getting the like Zoomed uh, domes and using that on for placing the lights on top of the tank rather than in the tank. Also, I do not suggest using red lights. Um, I don't know if you're keeping that on at night, but red lights can be seen by reptiles. The study saying that they cannot is old. So you're gonna want a heat emitter at night, and if this is a daytime bulb, you're gonna want a uh, proper daylight basking light. Besides your lighting situation, this is really good. Uh, make sure you're keeping up on cleaning the tank. I completely understand they're messy eaters and that could just be from a day, but keeping that nice and clean, I like that you're using tile that doesn't hold in um, the pee and poo and old food like Repti Carpet does. That's a really nice hammock for your bearded dragon. And it's suggested now that bearded dragons have a 75 gallon when full grown. This appears to be a 40 breeder Exoterra. So that would be something to keep in mind. But my number one thing is getting those lights outside of the enclosure rather than inside. And next up we have another bearded dragon and the owner let me know that they are working on getting a UVB and linear UVB is best just by the way. I believe I stated that to you. Uh, but this is a very impressive enclosure. I absolutely love this. I don't know if you custom made it or you had it made for you or you bought it, but this is really, really cool and it, like, it is just really cool. Um, I love how your bearded dragon can choose where they want to bask. They can be way up there, super warm, or as your bearded dragon in this picture is laying down a little bit farther. Uh, it's just really cool. It kind of, this back piece just incorporates everything your bearded dragon could need. My only suggestion would be adding like some plants or the vines just to add some dimension to the uh, stairway. And then having like a hammock down um, on the bottom if that's possible. I can't tell if it's front opening, which would make it difficult. Um, but just having something else like that where your bearded dragon can have their joints a little bit more relaxed than being on rock or whatever this material is. That's really my only suggestion. This is a really amazing setup. 
Um, great job. And next up we have a Puebloan milk snake. I apologize if I botched that name. I have personally never taken care of this species, so this is going to be kind of from the basic research I've done. The owner let me know that this is a 40 gallon breeder with a basking of 91 degrees Fahrenheit, a cool side of 73 degrees Fahrenheit on aspen bedding with UV, and that this was their first reptile for in a while. And now, this is great. This is a beautiful enclosure. You meet all the requirements. You have a good amount of aspen so that your uh, snake can burrow. And you have a ton of vines, a really nice hide, fresh water. You got it all. As someone who hasn't taken care of this snake, personally, I don't have a lot of um, help regarding personal experience. But you hit all the requirements. It's a really nice tank. You have a lot of hiding places. So from my experience, this is a really amazing tank, good job, and I can tell that with what you just gave me with all the numbers and everything like that is that you're a responsible pet owner, you did as much research as possible, and you are well equipped for your first reptile in a while, so good job. And next up is two wet tree frogs, and the owner let me know that they normally have a large log, but it broke. So my number one suggestion is going to be that you need more places for your uh, white street frogs to hide. I highly suggest having elevated horizontal shelves, whether that's a mushroom hide, or there's a few other creative things people have done, like using this frog dish soap dispenser bar thingy. It's really adorable. It's from AliExpress. Just having somewhere where your white street frogs can rest while also being up on the sides of the tank is really important. Also, placing those vines, they come with suction cups. Um, and you can stick them into the corners. Mine personally loves sleeping behind them in the corners of their enclosure. It's a good thing that you have them on paper towels. They are extremely messy, which I'm sure you know, so changing those daily or every other day is what I highly suggest. And make sure you're misting them. They need around 60 to 70% humidity, so make sure you're doing that. Uh, and just overall, you need a lot more places for your white street frogs to hide. That's gonna make sure that they're happy and not stressed and it gives them more of their realistic environment. So you could actually take that ladder and turn it into a hammock, just by putting it into the corner, two suction cups on one side, one suction cup on the other, because they have little sticky fingers, so they do not need to use something to climb up like a lizard, uh, but they will rest on a hammock like that. Um, I'm not sure if the ladder would do well becoming a hammock, but you could purchase a hammock. So just a lot more places to hide, making sure you're changing that paper towel daily or every other day and you're misting often would be my suggestion. But this is a really nice tank and having that front opening um, doors is really helpful. So amazing tank. All you need to do is just add some more places for your white street frogs to hide. And next up we have four young white street frogs. The owner let me know that they are going to upgrade to an 18 by 18 by 36. They have a 2.0 UVB for 10 hours a day, 25 watt heat emitter for winter and frog from frog foam they clean weekly. It's a tongue twister. So first starting with the tank that you're going to upgrade to, I actually use a 24 by 18 by 24 Exoterra medium tall enclosure. I like that tank a little bit better because it gives them more space horizontally as they get bigger and of course vertically. Then for your UVB 2.0 is perfect for frogs but I would only have it set for about six hours a day. That can be a little bit much. So having the UVB set for like 11 to 5 is a bit better just because that is when when the frogs would be receiving the most UV and since they can't get away from it in an enclosure it could actually cause like sunburn so I would suggest dimming that down to about six hours the 25 watt heat emitter is perfect for the winter they need heat emitters and a very low wattage so that's exactly what you need to do because excess heat that is unnecessary is just going to dry out the tank faster it's great that you have frog foam and it's also amazing that you're cleaning weekly because that can get very gross very fast if you're not on top of it. For your decor, it's absolutely perfect. You have a place where they can be perched on top along with the hammock and then the leaves and then you have that horizontal shelf I was talking about before and you have water, etc. Perfect, it's absolutely amazing. I love that you're willing to upgrade because you will need to upgrade. So overall, this is a really, really amazing tank. Good job. And next up, we have a young garter snake, and I would like to point out that the owner reached out to me before they had the enclosure and it was fully built. That is exactly what every reptile and amphibian and any pet owner ever needs to do. 
You need to be fully prepared by research and with materials before you adopt your animal. That is the most responsible thing to do. So I applaud you. Thank you so much for taking the time and doing the research and setting up the enclosure and then reaching out for advice. So you went above and beyond what people should do. So if you're looking to become an animal owner of any sorts, do your research, get everything ready, and then reach out for advice. That's the perfect way to do it. So for the enclosure, the owner let me know that this is a 29 gallon enclosure and a 50 watt heat bulb. Now, I personally have not had experience with garter snakes, but this is a perfect enclosure. I actually was kind of an understudy for a um, animal caretaker at a nature center. So I got to kind of witness it, but I didn't really do any hands-on with the garter snake. But this is exactly what you need from the coconut core to the decor, having places where they can bask and all the leaves and everything like that. This is absolutely perfect. And because these photos were taken before they had the snake, that is why the water bowl is empty. But seriously, this is amazing. You have the temperature and humidity gauge in the back, which is perfect. So. I have no critiques for the tank. This is really amazing. You could add a few um, vines to the enclosure. I know some snakes like to hide up um, higher in their enclosures. So you could add some vines in the corners or over like the rock you have but really that is my only suggestion. And I'd like to take a moment for you all to see this absolutely adorable garter snake that they sent me. Cutest thing ever. Like. I can't get over this. Um, they did receive the snake before I finished filming and editing this video, so enjoy this cute and adorable snake. And lastly, we have a ball python, and the owner let me know that they have a heat map, but the light is just for seeing better. Now, the light isn't just necessarily for seeing better. Uh, your ball python is nocturnal, but that is perfect that you have a light because they need to have natural day and night cycles. So at night, Everything should be shut off. They don't need any lights at all. If you need a supplement with extra heat, you need a heat emitter, um, not light. So that's really good that you have a light during the day to um, work as the sun so that they have normal uh, day and night cycles. I believe you have coconut core and moss as your substrate. It's a bit hard to see, but that is great if that is the case. Make sure that you have enough so that your ball python can get all snug inside that coconut core if they please. I absolutely love the driftwood pieces you have. They're perfect for basking. You have multiple levels for your snake to choose how warm they want to be. I love how many vines you have. There's so many different hiding places and you have two really nice solid hides for when they want to be hidden, basically on three sides. Uh, and you also have fresh water, which is really awesome. So overall, this is a really, really nice tank and this is basically what I'd suggest to any other ball python owner. So amazing job. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, you know what to do. Leave a like and subscribe to see that new family member. Have a happy day. Goodbye.